Hi, I'm Heidi Hesrick. I teach biomedical lab science, and today I have a video that's going to show you how to do a really easy to set up activity that will allow kids to learn and practice micropipetting skills. It can be used with kids who are completely new to micropipetting or kids who've done it, but they just need a little bit of practice making sure that their skills are very precise before they move on to a lab where they need to do it very accurately. Since the micropipette is one of the most important tools in microbiology, it's really important that kids know how to use it properly. Micropipettes are very expensive, so you don't want them to break it, but they also have to be able to use it accurately um, and pipette the exact right amount of liquid. So this lab will teach them how to use it really safely um, and correctly so they don't break it, but also how to pipette accurately. This this is the final result of what students will be making if they do it properly. So they'll be pipetting a rainbow for you. And you can see the droplets get smaller and smaller as you go down. So I will walk you through how to set up this lab and how to facilitate it for your students. In order to set up the lab, you will need both a 0.5 to 10 and a 20 to 200 micropipetter and the tips that go with each of those and your students will need those same things when they're going to do the lab. You'll also need some kind of containers in which to make your stock solutions. I used these 15 mil conical tubes, but you could use small beakers, cups, flasks, uh, graduated cylinders, whatever you'd like. I just like these because I can make the volume I want and cap them, shake them up. Um, you'll also need water and you will need the dyes to make these. I'm going to make my six stock solutions for my red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And I happen to have food dyes for all those colors because my kids are into baking. But if not, you could just use red, yellow, and blue and mix colors as needed. You will also need this handout, which your version that you give the kids will be blank, and you can print it from the description of this video. And you'll need something to cover the handout because uh, otherwise the droplets soak right in and you can't see them. So I used press and seal, but you could use plastic wrap, regular plastic wrap, press and seal. Sometimes transparencies work. You'll want to try it out beforehand. Just something that will not allow the liquids to absorb, but is see-through so you can lay it on top. You might have luck with laminating and doing it on a laminated sheet. You could try that out. Um, lots of different possibilities for how you do this. The final thing that you'll need is a microcentrifuge tube rack and seven microcentrifuge tubes for each lab group that you're going to run. So each will get the six colors plus one tube of water. And I like to use the well, actually, you could use the 0.5 um, milliliter microcentrifuge tubes. I might swap them out for the 0.5 because the most you're going to put into any of the tubes is 330 microliters. So they'll easily fit in a 0.5. These are one mil tubes, but I'm probably going to swap them out. Before students begin, these are things I always reinforce with my students and make them write down. So the first thing is to never, ever, ever turn the pipette outside of its range. This is a 0.5 to 10 microliter pipette, and you can see its range down here, which means they should never turn it to below 0.5 or to above 10 microliters. And that's so important because that can break the micropipette. So I reinforce that over and over again. The other thing they should never do is invert the pipette once there is liquid in the tip. The tip can have the liquid on it uh, because you switch out the tips, but what you never ever want is for the end of the micropipette to get any of that liquid in it because that needs to remain sterile. So if they flip this upside down, the liquid can run into it. So I insist that they never turn it more than this much and basically you try to keep your pipette uh, upright like this whenever you have liquid in the tip. The next thing is for students to learn the difference between the first and the second stop on a pipette. So I have them practice with their thumb, push to the first stop. That's where you start to feel resistance and just practice pushing to the first stop and then push to the second stop. That's all the way. 
And it's really important. A lot of kids will try to push farther than the first stop when they're expelling liquid and they'll get more than they need and they'll run out. So practice, practice with just feeling where that first stop is. When you go to extract your liquid, you go to the first stop because it's a precise measurement. And when you go to expel it, you go to the second stop. I'm going to demo the first stop, second stop. I want to extract 7.5 microliters of my red solution, just as an example. First, you press your thumb to the first stop. I got a little on my thumb. No big deal. It's just food dye. Um, push, push to the first stop. And you want to do that before the tip goes into the liquid because you don't want to put air bubbles in if it's a small volume of liquid. Then you release your thumb and you can see that you have exactly 7.5, a precise measurement. Then when you go to expel it, if you push to the first stop, you'll notice not every bit came out. There's a little bit left in the tip, and that's why when you go to expel, you push all the way to the second stop so you can get the last bits out of the tip. You can either teach your students this, or I'll make a video for the student side of this. You'll see the link below. Decide whether you'd rather go through it with them or show them the video in which I will go through it with them. Before you let the students start pipetting, you want them to fill in this column that says micropipette to use so that you know they're going to grab the right micropipette for those droplets. So for the first three droplets, they're big enough that you want to use the 20 to 200 because 20, 30, and 40 all fit within the range of 20 to 200. So you check the side, that's 20 to 200. They'll set the range for each 20, 30, and 40 and make those droplets. Where they're going to get a little stuck is on the green because 15 isn't between 20 and 200 and it's not between 0.5 and 10. So they will have to figure out that for the green they have to use the 0.5 to 10 because they'll break the big one and they should set it to 7.5 and do two droplets each time. Or they could set it to 5 and they could do three droplets each time or they could set it to 10 and do one droplet of 10 in each area and then one droplet of five. But the green's gonna be the trickiest because they cannot get it with a single drop. The blue and the purple are pretty obvious. Five and 10 both fall between 0.5 and 10, so they'll use the small pipette for that. Tell them that they should get eight droplets for each color, and that's why the rainbow is divided into eight sections for each color. That's how many they should get. If they get a different number, they can write that in that column. And then you're just going to have them do a little bit of math. So they should figure out if they make eight droplets that are each 40 microliters in size, the volume of the tube was 320 microliters, etc. So those are their tube volumes. Now you're going to prep their tubes. And for each tube that we prep, we're going to give them an extra 10 microliters just to play with. But we're not going to give them any more wiggle room than that. I am going to first aliquot out my red solution. Since the kids will need 320 microliters, I'm going to give them 330. My pipette goes to 200, and so I've set it to 165 because 165 times 2 equals 330. And I'm just going to then do it two times. So here is their first 165. Here is their second 165 for a total of 330 microliters of their red solution. I'm not going to tell them their volume. They'll have to figure it out. I did switch to the 0.5 tubes because you can see there's more than enough room. Now I'll do my orange solution. They'll need 240, so I'm going to give them 250. I can't go to 250, so I'm going to split it, go to 125, and again, I'm going to pipette two times. 125 and 250. For the yellow, they're supposed to get 160. I'm going to give them 10 extra. So now I'll go to 170 on my pipette and I will just pipette a single time. For the green, we need 120. So I'm going to go to 130. And again, I just need to do a single.
for blue, we're going to need 80. So I've set my pipette to 90. For purple, they just need 40. I have set my pipette to 50. And your final tube that you give them, just fill with water in case they want to practice with clear water first before they start using their colored droplets. So your tubes for each team should look sort of like this. Be careful because if you drop them like I did the orange one or flip them, it's not all going to be in the bottom. So if you can, you could have them spin them in a micro centrifuge right before they use them because otherwise they might run out. Or they could just tap them on the table to try to get all the liquid to the bottom. Otherwise, if some of it's up in the lid or on the sides, they will run out of liquid. A couple of facilitation things. You'll have to decide if you want kids to do this totally alone, um, if you want them to partner. If you have them do it alone, you probably have a limited number of pipettes, so you might want to plan accordingly that certain kids are doing this while other kids are doing something else. You could have them do it in a team of three and sort of do a relay thing, like you go make six droplets, um, one of each color, and then the next kid goes and makes six, and the next kid goes and makes six until they get them. Or one kid does the red, then the next kid comes and does the orange, the next kid comes and does the yellow, then you go back to the first kid. I would just make sure the teams are no more than three people so that every kid can get practice with red, orange, or yellow, and green, blue, or purple. So they're using both of the micro pipettes and tips to practice. Another thing to think about is what are you going to do if a kid messes up? So personally, what I would do is have more of these tubes available and just say at any point, if you can't make eight droplets, they're not the same size, then you call the teacher over, I help show you the right technique, and then I replace your original tube with a new one. So my goal is that every kid be successful with this and they be able to do the rainbow. I think of it as a formative assessment, not a summative. So I am just helping them along the way until they get it. When they've made this rainbow, I know they're ready to move on to another lab. Remember, I'm going to be making a video for the student end of this that you can use or not use. It will show some of the things I showed you about what to do and what not to do with the pipettes, um, but I won't reveal the answers for the kids. I will make the video um, for the students within two days of making this video, so you can check the summary of this video below to see a link to the student video. Finally, once I've made the student side of Pipette the Rainbow, I plan to make a video for teachers about how to prepare a mystery solution and then do the lab with your students where they're going to try to figure out the concentration of the mystery solution by pipetting and measuring accurately and doing some math and using their observational skills. So if you're subscribed to the channel, you should see that pop up. I plan to post that within the next three days after making this video. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.